Hi, I'm Marcy Lundy. Today is Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, and this is the Cult of Kindness podcast. Welcome to our audio and video edition. And my guest this week is Robert Lewin. Lewin, yes. Yay, I got it right. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, Robert. Thank you. All right. So Robert is a social media marketing guru, as well as a writer for Medium. Uh, so wonderful to have you on. Thank you so, so very much. Happy to be on. Yes. So the book of the month for this month is all about training the mind. Um, right. And the name is such a beautiful name, the author, but I don't want to butcher it. So <laughs> please, everyone, just look up uh, Training the Mind. And like I said, I tried to say his name a couple of times last week on that episode, but I do not want to butcher the name. So no judgments. No judgments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, don't want to do that. Okay, so we are going to be talking about thinking bigger and thinking greater. And so, Robert, first of all, you are very accomplished at what you do. I was looking at your list of accomplishments and job well done. <laughs> Thank you. How long have you been uh, a writer and how long have you been a social media marketer? Okay, you know what, let me, can I start answering that question from here? And yeah. by here, I mean, let's go back in the past a bit. Okay. So growing, so growing up, right? Mm -hmm. I was never this huge writer. Okay. I was never this huge English student. No, granted, I was a pretty smart kid growing up. Mm -hmm. But 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 English was not so much one of my go-to languages when it came to high school, primary school, uh, college. I was more someone that was inclined with doing mathematics and things of that nature. Okay. So writing for me I, I, is something that I developed a passion for throughout my college years. Okay. So oh. it's, it's not a case where I was avidly writing as a child. And mm -hmm. if it's something that I was passionate about then, I developed the passion for it later when I was going to, to college. Okay. So what was it that you encountered that uh, kind of piqued your interest with writing when you were in college? Okay, so the, the whole journey pretty much began when I was doing my degree in economics. And then our, our thing here in Jamaica or at the University of the West Indies mm -hmm. is that you pretty much have to read for your degree. Oh, yes. Okay. Right? When you go to high school, you're, you're held by the hand and the teachers help you to do all the necessary things to get you to the next level. Sure. At university, you're pretty much on your own as an adult. Yeah. You have to be more responsible. You have to get the classes on time. You have to do your assignments. You literally have to be an adult. Right. You have to get things done. Mm -hmm. Our motto, in a sense, was you have to read for your degree. That's what your college professors would always tell you. Okay. But for me, going to classes in the day and doing my studies at night, I was someone that was always trying to do research on how can I find ways to make an income online? Okay. And that's a flat out truth, right? Right. How can I, as a college kid, do things in my spare time to maybe fund myself a little bit better throughout my college years? And that's pretty much how it started. I would go to classes in the day, get home at night, do a little bit of research. And that's how I was pretty much led on the path what is called some people some of your listeners may know it as affiliate marketing okay and then from affiliate marketing i went into the realm of blogging which i am still in today oh yeah wonderful that's a great connection okay yes yeah, so uh one of the things i was impressed it said in 2019 you did a social media manager for the global digital marketing network that's right. Global was, Digital Marketing Summit. Summit, yes. How was right. that? Uh, that was a new experience for me because it's not something that uh, it's not something that I was so much so planning for. It's an mm -hmm. opportunity that was really presented to me at the time. Okay. 
I was focusing on, on other projects and then a friend of mine who knew that I was very much skilled in the area of social media management. She's an yes. attorney and mm -hmm. she reached out to me and said, hey, there's this event coming up in a, in a few months time and I think this would be a great fit for you. Okay. Tell me what you think about it. Okay. And then I did some thinking, I did some research about the company, the, the summit the speakers that would be on board. And I said, you know what? I, I think this is something that I want to be a part of. And that's how I got connected with the various persons that would be working on the program. And then it, it, it all kind of snowballed from there. Wonderful. Okay. Very good. I know that when we first connected online, like you were so charming and personable uh, that it was very easy to gel well with you. And I wrote down uh, something that you have written in uh, your bio on LinkedIn. Right. And it says, I love creating something from nothing and getting the right people to pay attention. Right. So that, first of all, that's very clever. And thank you. Uh, like I said, as personable as you were when we first started interacting, uh, you know, how is that just something you're in tune with? You feel like, uh, okay, this is someone I can gel with. But before all of that, how do you find those people and figure, okay, they're a good fit or these are the people who I think will pay attention to what I'm doing? You, you mean the, the, the people, the great fit in terms of the people who are now my connections or my audience? Yeah, your connections and your audience. Like, do you use the same kind of technique? Like, what are you looking for where you think, okay, I feel like these people will pay attention, uh, and be a good fit in, any, in either of those settings where it's appropriate. Okay, so one of the things that I learned uh, while on my digital marketing journey, which is also one of the fields that I'm, I'm certified in, a part of my training over the years was you have to learn how to find the right audience for your business, for your niche, or whatever venture that you're in. Okay. So for me, Having garnered that type of training and expertise over the years, I understood how I was able to find the right people to connect with on the various platforms. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that's said in the digital marketing world is you have to go where your audience hangs out. That's very critical. Yeah. Right? You yeah. have to go where your audience hangs out. That's how you're gonna build a proper business. Mm -hmm. if your audience is not on LinkedIn, then why are you on LinkedIn? Right. The audience is not on Facebook. Then why are you on Facebook? True. So the simple truth is you need to channel your energy where it matters most. That's true. Right. So in my case, for digital marketing and blogging, I found that a lot of persons who are interested in my type of services, products, content would be on a platform like LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Because LinkedIn is, is really that niche of professionals, creatives, freelancers, and, and, other, and other business leaders who are all interested in learning something new, who are yes. all interested in taking your business to the next level, who yes. are persons who read on a daily basis. Yes. And that's where the whole reading and writing thing comes into play. They read on a daily basis. Absolutely. So connecting with those people would have been an easier thing to do for me personally on LinkedIn because I knew it was the right channel to be a part of. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, and that's true. I mean, LinkedIn is like strictly looking and reading that you're not gonna find out anything unless you're doing that. Okay, right, exactly. but, but yes. can I add one more thing? Sure, yes. Okay, so just to, to shift things in a direction of how you and I per se got to interact. Mm -hmm. For me, one of the things that I, I try to do mostly when it comes to connecting with new people, whether it's a new connection or whether it's an audience member, mm -hmm. is I really want to be genuinely interested in the person, right? Okay. Yes. They're not just a connection for me. They're not just a follower for me. If, it's a case, if, if it was a case for YouTube, they would not just be a subscriber for you. Right. Right? So I want to respect those people as real people and not just as numbers. I love that. That right. really much ties into what I was going to ask. Um, just, you know, piggybacking off of how you find your audience or your, you know, core group you're reaching out to. Um, right. Do you also incorporate 
uh, what's hot, so to speak, what needs to be marketed as interesting, profitable. Um, how do you get to your point or is it just all going back to where you're like, okay, um, I know on LinkedIn, this is a specific group of people that's interested in this. Do you feel like you have to sell yourself in any way or you're in a community where this just is going to flow because that's what that's about? Well, I, I think in the initial stages, you have to sell yourself a bit mm -hmm. because in the initial stages, it's like a first date. You don't just ask the person you're dating to marry you on the first date. You have to do the necessary work, which, right. which is pretty much the groundwork. You have yeah. to go out on dates. You have to get a bottle of champagne. You have to ensure that the restaurant is the right restaurant. Sure. You have to ensure that even if you're going to go out on a date, your time matches the other person's time. Right. Right. So it's all a process. It's not just, I met you today, let's get married tomorrow. That's not right. how it works. And <laughs> right. the same is true for you and your connections or your audience. You want to build that relationship and building a relationship takes time, sure. right? Yes. So if you're going to promote a service, you're going to promote a product, people are not going to just purchase something from you as is. They want to know who you are. They want to know why they should trust you. They want to know if your product is any good. And they also want to know how is it that you stand out from the next guy? Because yes. gurus nowadays are all over the place. Right. Right? Seeing a guru is not something that's new or even right. strange. Seeing a, a guru is something that's commonplace. We've seen gurus online, on social media, every single day. What's important for you as a creative is how can I differentiate myself from the next guy? How can I differentiate myself from the competition. And for me, that's what I tried to do. I tried to, to show interest in my connection from day one. So if I'm on LinkedIn, I actually take their profiles very seriously. I would go on each connection's profile, read their actual profile, see, get, try to get a little bit of background and history. What college did they go to? What courses did they study? Yes. Are they in digital marketing just like I am? Uh, right. What books do they like to read? Uh, are they the right persons for me to connect with based on similarities or commonalities, right? right. And if that's true, then I could send them an invite. Mm -hmm. As I send them an invite and they accept that we can begin that, that relationship building process. I could send them a message. They could hopefully respond if they have the time. Yes. And then after that, then the relationship continue building again takes time so it's not just about me sending a message today and we're best friends tomorrow right it's something that has to be done on a daily basis a weekly basis monthly basis and in many cases a yearly basis yeah it, you really have to nurture that right. exactly excellent relationship yes exactly. Uh, how do you use your tools of generosity and charisma you know and kindness to, you know, when you're writing as a blogger, uh, strategizing, how do you use those sort of tools in your creative process? Uh, well, number one, that's a very beautiful question. So thank you for that one. Of course. Um, I'll start here by saying, when it comes to generosity, I think one of the golden rules online, especially as a creative, is that if you're gonna create content, you should be giving as much value to your audience, you should be giving as much value to your clients as much as possible, right? It's not just about you creating a product or a service and making a quick buck. It's about you being valuable to the people that you're trying to serve. It's about sure. you giving away free content 80% of the time, right? It's right. about you wanting people to respect you as a business leader because you gave away free advice. Right. Right. It's also about you being human, which is having yeah. those one on one interactions <laughs> with people. Yes. And most of the time this comes in, in play when you may be doing a free consultation call with someone right. for the first time. It's mm -hmm. you being relatable. It's you being human. And it's you being understanding of where this understanding of where this person is coming from. Oh, I love that. 
they might be new to digital marketing, they might be scared of digital marketing. This might be a new field for them. Right. So by you allowing them to be, be comfortable enough to want to open up to you to actually do business with you, I think that's a good place to start. It shows you're human, it shows you're decent, it shows yeah. you're kind, it shows you're down to earth, and it shows it shows that you're someone that I am willing to work with. Absolutely. I'm so glad you said that because a, a lot of times, especially on LinkedIn, people are just trying to push whatever it is that they do. Exactly. And that's the wrong approach. Yes. And it's like, if you're not personable, you know, people can see that right away, just like they can see you're personable right away. And exactly. if you're just strictly a quick high and right to whatever it is, no, that's right. not personable. And I'm uninterested because you didn't try. Exactly. Yeah. Could I, let, could I just give you a, a quick tip before we move to the next question? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So here's something that I actually learned recently. Thank you. A lot of people who are on social media these days, they think that maybe because we're in this digital age, mm -hmm. going online to start a business means, or it translates to, I need to spend money to buy 10,000 followers so that oh. I can be Insta famous or some kind of online celebrity. Yes. Right? So mm -hmm. a lot of people take that approach to saying, you know what? I want to be famous. I want to be looked at as this huge star so the best place for me to start is to buy a, a large number of followers yeah. right yeah that's actually the worst way to start a business it's number one mm -hmm. number two for me personally as a creative i have learned that over the years that well i actually developed a, a large following on social media but how i got to doing such a thing was that took time yes i didn't just go out and buy a huge number of followers <laughs> especially yes. in the case of my linkedin account i have twenty nine thousand followers very good and it was recently that i realized that i actually got that number because of years of work that's great yes those twenty nine thousand people i've talked to each and every one of them oh my gosh that I, right because i've sent out a message to each person wow that is I, really I, thank you. I also started a newsletter recently, and in 24 hours, I got a thousand subscribers to my <laughs> newsletter. Yes. Now, the point I'm making is if I didn't build that relationship over years, because those people knew me years ago on LinkedIn, yes. if I wasn't able to build that relationship, I could never get a thousand people to subscribe to my newsletter so by true. publishing one article. Right. Right. That's, that's not normal it's not and right. i i am just so impressed that you have connected with all twenty nine thousand people that right. is really impressive thank you yes because when people buy followers that's first horrible you don't right. know these people right <laughs> you, you don't know these people and even if you buy followers sometimes you're buying random people that are not even interested in you your yes. product or your service no engagement. No engagement. That's a reality. Yes. But by, by sending a message to each connection, having a discussion, trying to be personable, relatable, trying to actually be human and show that you care, that's the best place to actually start. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, because if, I mean, same is true in the real world. If you're going to meet somebody, you have to have those conversations in the real world. Same right. should be true about the online world people should be treated with respect yes people should be appreciated mm -hmm. they shouldn't just be looked at as oh this person is my next subscriber this person is my next follower this person is my next linkedin connection no look at each person as an individual look at yeah. each person as an actual person yes yeah and those numbers are oh like i said i'm blown away that is really impressive and like I said earlier, I know I felt like this guy is charismatic, you know, he's funny, you right. know, I love that engagement. And to know that you do that with everyone, I mean, right. and it's coming from the heart, you know, that's, right. that is the true path to, you know, being successful and 
Right. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. I'm sorry, I'm stuck on that. That's just really good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Uh, would you say that you use a perimeter of generosity? It sounds like uh, you do, uh, based off of what you just said. Um, right. Am I right? Do you use a perimeter of, of your generosity? You're actually right on the ball. But the thing is, that's actually a skill that was taught, taught to me as a writer. Okay. Right. So uh, separate and apart from my own personality, which is me being, you know, uh, kind, decent, down to earth, uh, funny, uh, someone that's actually good mm -hmm. to be around, someone that, that's all about a good vibe. Okay. Separate and apart from all of that. It's about me learning that skill as a writer over the years to be personable, mm -hmm. to be relatable, to yes. have my readers to want to connect with my, my articles and my pieces. So mm -hmm. That's a skill that I learned. So every time someone reads my article, they can get that type of energy from me that, you know what? This guy wrote an article that I'm really impressed with, but how was he able to get inside my head and know what I was thinking? It's because mm. what I did was I placed myself into the shoes of the reader. Wow. Okay. Right. If my reader is struggling with building a social media audience, mm -hmm. I have to remember what it was like to have zero followers. Wow. Yes. If my audience is struggling with making sales on LinkedIn, mm. I have to remember what it's like to make zero dollars on LinkedIn. Mm. So, so sometimes it's about you going back in the past, which is fine because a, a trip down memory lane is not so bad. But sure. you, you have to do that from time to time to actually know where your clients are coming from, where your audience is coming from, where your readers are coming from. And that's the way you're able to get the necessary results, uh, right? By yeah. you looking at this person as a human being, trying to understand what their struggle is because they're actually struggling. That's why they came to you as a professional, because they have a struggle. Exactly. Right. And once you can provide the necessary solutions, then it's all good from there. Can you school a number of U.S. politicians? Because <laughs> they really need this advice. <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah. No, I mean, you really hit the nail right on the head. You, you have to remember when, and you right. know, for some people, if you never had that when, you just have to remove yourself from your situation and put yourself in the people's shoes. That's right. beautiful. Exactly. exactly. Very good, Robert. Thank you. Um, so secondly, from that, is getting the right people to pay attention a modest act of giving kindness for you? Um, or are you sincerely just doing it from your heart? It seems like it's very sincere. I would have to say it's very sincere because I, I think more so for me, it's how I was raised. Okay. You know, okay. so I'm not saying everyone out there is like that or everyone out there is going to be like that. But for me, that's just how I was raised. I was raised in a good family with great people that I actually look up to. So <laughs> some of that energy was channeled onto me as a younger sibling and as a son. Sure. So when it comes to doing my pieces, when it comes to relating to people, when it comes to having basic conversations with newcomers, it's easy, it's easy for me to want to be sincere. Okay. It's easy for me to want to do all the necessary things to break the ice mm -hmm. with someone that's new to my field, which is digital marketing. Because mm -hmm. again, not everyone that's within this space is an expert. Mm. Not everyone that's within this space has everything figured out. Right. Not everyone in this space knows what tomorrow is going to be like business-wise, sales-wise, yeah. profit-wise, right? Yeah. Some people are actually struggling because they're doing this for the first time. Some people are actually... Uh, shattered mentally because they have been scammed over the years oh yeah so venturing into something now a few years later can still be a tragic 
memory for them. Right. And still be a terrifying memory for them. Mm -hmm. Right. So once you have that mindset that, you know what, let me do all the necessary things to help as much people as I can, then again, it's all easy from there. Okay. Well, let me say, I mean, your family did a fantastic job because you're right. Those are like life tools. Right. And then you pair that with what you learn as you go to school right. for what you're going to do. And I mean, you're a wonderful example of, you know, putting the, all of that together, be personal, be personable, be sincere. That's right. wonderful. Right. Uh, let's see. So to excel in the marketing field, the way that you have, would you say that accuracy and awareness uh, take place at all times that you're navigating through your creative process and you know you're able to explain uh, and I say you just answered that you're able to explain to people you're paying attention uh, you're aware it's yes but but all right, let me take it from here okay here's the thing I think it kind of comes with age so to speak, and by age, I mean years of experience. Yeah. When you're starting out, again, as a newcomer, and you want to reach to the top as an expert or as a guru or as a business coach or a leader, it's going to take time. Yeah. You don't get to that place overnight. No. And that's where the huge misconception is. It's today that you're a newcomer. And because you may have solved a few problems tomorrow, then tomorrow mm -hmm. makes you an expert. The, un the answer is actually no. You're not yeah. an expert yet. Yes. You still have more training to go. You still have more things to do. You still have a lot of, of things to accomplish. You still have a lot of people's lives to impact. Right. So the road is actually not done as yet. Mm. There's so much more to do. So for me, you, you, you won't have everything figured out in the initial stages, you know, mm -hmm. and again, even as an expert, you still don't have everything set up. Right. So because true. Every day is a learning process. Yes. Now, did right. you learn that over time or did you come into the game like already aware that it's a process? It's not going to happen straight away. Again, another wonderful question. <laughs> um, for me, I was lucky and also blessed enough to have the right type of mentors around me per se ah. because throughout my college years i was again doing my research trying to learn about this affiliate marketing blogging digital marketing fields what they were about what they entailed why i should be a part of it but then when i met the the right online influencers and the right online business coaches and mentors that's what helped me to reinforce my mindset Okay. as a creative okay what i did was i bought all the right courses i got mm -hmm. all the necessary training and i did all the necessary things to make me better as a creative mm -hmm. and from there while being in the actual field that i was able to develop and sharpen my skills sure. which makes me an expert today absolutely so there, there's that entire process but once you're you're inspired enough mm -hmm. once you're willing enough to get started you will move from point a to z but the this the distance between point a and z is a very interesting one mm. because you have a lot of uh you have a lot of obstacles to overcome sure you have a lot of interesting people to meet along the way you and you can even those experiences in your approach exactly. right. right and those things are things that will help your story so okay. my story i mean when you look at my my linkedin profile mm -hmm. crafted in a way that it's it's almost like storytelling it is yes but that storytelling isn't just something that just came out of the woodworks something mm -hmm. that i had to learn over a period of time it involves people that i've met it involves experiences, mm -hmm. it involves training based on courses that I've done, it involves certification, it involves and encompasses all those things which makes my story mine. It's because right. I went through a 
process. I did the journey. I started from A, now I'm at Z, but it's not smooth sailing from A to Z. It's a lot right. of hiccups. It's a lot of training. It's a lot of meeting the right people. Sometimes you meet some of the wrong persons. Right. Right? Sometimes you have to reconnect with people. Sometimes you have to create a product. The product sucks. Then yes. you have to go back to the drawing board and figure out why this product didn't work how it mm -hmm. was supposed to. Right. Sometimes you have to learn that, you know what, as an expert, I don't have everything figured out. Yes. I can be a student while I'm an expert. I can learn from my readers. I can learn from an audience. I can mm -hmm. learn that the person who I think is at the bottom is not really at the bottom. Mm -hmm. They're right yeah. where I am at. It's just yeah. that they think that they're not worthy. Mm -hmm. They think that they're not good enough. They think that they're not awesome. Mm. They think that they don't have as much inspiration. They think that they, they'll, they'll not be the next Robert Lewin. Wow. Right? Louder for the people in the back. That's fantastic. Exactly. So it's all about having that right mindset. Oh my gosh, Robert. You have completely blown me away. I was Thank looking you. through my questions. I'm like, he literally answered that already. <laughs> right. You're welcome. I am so impressed. Have you ever done a TED Talk? I've never done a TED Talk. Oh my gosh. You need to do a TED Talk. You have I would love to do a TED Talk, by the way. I've never yeah. actually done one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Because the information you have is so useful. You know, yeah. and I mean, especially in this day and age, I feel like people are always trying to get to success quickly. Right. You know, you have to build that exactly everything that you just said. Right. Oh my gosh. And, every, yeah. and everything that does take time again, it does take a lot of time. It, it's a process it's an actual journey it's something that is good i yes. think it's very interesting because once you go through those different experiences it adds to your story as a storyteller oh my gosh yes and your story could be used to inspire the next generation absolutely correct yes okay robert well you have given the audience so much wonderful information uh if they'd like to follow you and read your uh work uh, please right. tell them where they can find you okay so in this segment i want to say the best way to connect with me would be on linkedin okay. because uh, i'm on linkedin pretty much every day that's where I, I do most of my work okay you can follow me on linkedin at robert lewin i, I actually do have two linkedin accounts Mm -hmm. You can follow me on LinkedIn at Robert Lewin, or you can follow me at Robert L, which is my newer account. Mm -hmm. As my first account is actually maxed out at 30,000 30, connections. Wow. Oh, that's I'm amazing. An account. And I'm doing the process all over again. Okay. I'm meeting people step by step, having those one on one conversations, the first connection, the 10th connection, the 100th connection. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the process all over again. Uh, they can, and if they're interested in my my writings and my articles and my pieces, yes. they can follow me on Medium at Serious Blogger. Okay. You can head on over to Medium, type in Serious Blogger, and they'll see my articles. Or they can search for my name, Robert Lewin, find my articles on there. They can follow me. I'll be happy to follow back. And then they can also send me a message to see how personable I am. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. believe me when I say he is extremely personable and it's definitely sincere. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yes, um, Robert, you've blown me away. All right, like I know I told you months ago when we were going to do this, I knew it would be fun and easy. Right. And I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm sure our Cult of Kindness audience is impressed also. But here's the thing. My confession is I knew it would be a fun interview. Because <laughs> again, we, we've had those... those uh, behind the scenes conversations where it, it, it flows, it goes really well. And it's not just about me having a good personality or a fun personality. The same is true for you too. Oh, because you. you were so kind and awesome enough to accept my invite. Mm -hmm. You were so awesome enough to respond to my first message. Oh, thank you. You were so amazing enough to say, hey, you know what? I want this guy to be a part of my podcast. Yes. Yes, because also I kept feeling bad when I wasn't able to uh, go into your clubhouse room. And I was like, oh, I want to do it. And I kept missing the time. So 
I was so excited when you could do the podcast. Oh, wow. 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 wow, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm, there's a saying, everything um, happens at the right moment or time or season. Right. So I right. think this was just the right moment, time and season. Oh, absolutely. Kismet for sure. Yeah. And so I, and I'm, I'm, I'm just hopeful that everything that I've said on here will be of value and extreme benefit to your audience. Um, I wanted to not just come on and have a conversation. I wanted to leave a few nuggets that would be mm. helpful for them. Because oh, yeah. again, if you're starting out for the very first time and you don't have everything figured out, the answer is that's okay. Right. If you're starting out for the first time and you want to get to the next level, the answer is you can. Yes. If you're starting out for the first time and you don't know where to begin, I think MC's podcast is where you need to be. <laughs> and you know, so funny because like you, I have more than one LinkedIn page. That's why right. it's the one we're connected on is MC Lundy. And I'm like, have I ever said my name is Marcy? <laughs> That's funny. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, my name is Marcy, but it's because I have more than one LinkedIn. So it's right, to right, separate right. the two. Yeah. Right, right, right. And same, and again, same is true for me. Yeah. I used my first account. I maxed out the 30,000 connections. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, I want to connect with more people. And right. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this all over again. Mm -hmm. so I, did. I created a second profile. And now I'm at over 3,000 connections on there. Yes. I have two newsletters and I write for both both accounts i write for for medium i write on cura.com yes and, and no i've just recently launched my my paid newsletter on substacks oh wow very good right so guys if you want to follow me over there as well you can reach out to me again very personable easy to talk to send a message i'll be happy to respond Yes. And did I see that you wrote a book also, Robert? Well, it, I have a book that I was working on for a period of time now. Okay. It's in the 90% in the completion stages, which I want to put on Amazon. Oh. And I've been procrastinating for a while to do that. So I have a few, few people who have given copies to, who have read it, who have loved it. And they said, you know what? Put everything else on the back burner and just get this book on Amazon because I think your audience is going to love it. So that's I one of my newest projects. Wow, that's exciting. Uh, for season three, uh, I'm putting it out there now. If I could have you on once the book's been published, I'd love to have that as the book of the month. Thank you. Uh, but in terms of something that is um, easily accessible, if people mm -hmm. want to be a part of that as well, I yes. have this new course, which is called uh, one, two, three, LinkedIn sales. Oh, yeah. For persons who have never made a sale on LinkedIn. Okay. Right. So that's my newest project that I've actually worked on and completed. I'm actually yeah. in the process of doing, doing, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm actually in the process right now of putting together a team of beta testers. Okay. To test out the course for free. And that, that group is, is about 50 to 100 beta testers. So I'm actually in the process of doing that since last week. I have a few people on board so far. So if your listeners want to be a part of that program as well, you're free to reach out to me for more details. Oh, yeah, wonderful. I'm so glad you said that. And when Thank do you, you sleep? I am so impressed by everything you do. When do you sleep? <laughs> when do I sleep? Yes. You know what? That's actually... That's actually another good question. I haven't been asked that question in forever. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, <laughs> because seriously. Sleep is so, yeah, sleep is so important. Yeah. Um, you know what? The truth is sleep is important. Mm -hmm. Another truth is we need to get it when we should. Right. But the, the reality is sometimes we don't because uh, we want to get everything on the ground. Yes. We want to ensure that the book that we've written is published. We want to ensure that the course is not created, reached into the right hands of the right people. Yes. We want to ensure that we're, we're on the programs that we said that we're going to be a part of. 
months yeah. in advance, such as this podcast. Yes. And we want to do the necessary things to serve our audience. So right. sometimes we should be good boys and girls and get eight <laughs> hours of sleep that we need, but sometimes we don't. That's oh, the yeah. truth. It's but true, having, that, having that, that balance between work and play mm-hmm. is good. Yeah. It's necessary. Should be done. Sometimes it isn't, but where we can, I think we should. Absolutely. I am 100% in agreement with that. Well, Robert, uh, I can't stop smiling. Thank you so much for coming on. You're such a breath of fresh air. Thank you. I am happy to be on. Um, oh, wow. If you need to have me on in the future, it will be my pleasure. Oh, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> Thank you so much. And audience, you heard him. I'll also add a link to his LinkedIn page uh, in the notes for the podcast episode. Again, Robert, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Wonderful. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.